agenda or unfinished business, uh, we'll move on to uh, four plats. Uh, we'll move on to number 12, public comment. Okay, for public comment this evening, Scott and I are going to again uh, trade back and forth, but we only have six uh, uh, public comments this evening, so it should go a little faster. And actually, our first public comment has nothing to do with uh, ICE. So uh, the first public comment is from Ron Honesty. Uh, Ron is the owner of Wild West Town in Marengo. It says, hello, McHenry County board members. I hope this letter finds you well. I assumed operations of the 45-year-old McHenry County Institution, Donnelly's Wild West Town, in 2018. I made a substantial investment into the attraction so that this tradition could be continued for generations to come. You may recall summer of 2019 had a record rainfall resulting in the most challenging season in the 45-year 45 45 year history of the park. As we are a seasonal business, we closed in September of 2019, suffering a major loss. The, the COVID-19 pandemic did not allow us to open our business for the 2020 season. Hopefully, we will be allowed to reopen in May of 21. If we are, it would come after a 19th month hiatus. Yet we are being required to pay a $2,000 liquor license we could not use. With our business closed for all this time, that payment would represent a hardship to us. I'm asking for a deferment of the liquor and license fee. I know the option of letting the license go and reapplying is in the future exists, but I would like to avoid fingerprinting and all the other requirements of reapplying. Things are challenging enough right now. I'm appealing to you all on this. I'm doing everything I can to keep the park going. Thank you. I wish you and our families safety and uh, in good health always. Ron Honesty. Our next question is from Bob Pauline Kaepernick. Hello, I'm writing to you about the McKinley County contractual involvement with the ICE, or excuse me, the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency. It has recently come to my attention that the McKinley County Board is not aware of the expenses attributed to carrying out the county's part in this contract. Therefore, the residences of McKinley County may be having tax dollars diverted to programs we may not support and may not be able to afford. This this is money that could be better allocated to funding schools and equipping our police with equipment and training to provide equitable law enforcement to all the county's residents. Until the county board can provide better accounting of the ICE contract, it should be discontinued, either until the county board can demonstrate how the contract is at the very least providing revenue to the county. Ideally, the determination will consider if the contract actually enhances the safety for the residents of McHenry County which should be at the heart of all the county board's decisions. Sincerely, Brian Petrano. Peter, you're muted. Uh, starting again, uh, this message is from Jill Pixley in Woodstock. Dear board members, a sentiment was expressed of finding these comments regarding ending the ICE contract as a tremendous abuse of our time. This is so utterly offensive and privileged considering the content of these comments are referring to actual dehumanization of a group of people in which this county has chosen to participate. Financial excuses to be tied to the contract are still unknown and certainly not a valid reason to continue the practice. Know that the atrocities of this contract will continue to attract protest and reaction amongst McHenry County residents whom are uncomfortable with the disturbing trend of xenophobic policy. Please vote to end the ICE contract in our county as other counties have done across this country. Jill Pixley, Woodstock. The next public comment is from Ian Sullivan. Dear County Board, I want to begin by thanking you for your service to our community during these challenging times. I know you have a lot on your plates and are going to be forced to make very difficult decisions in the months and years to come. I read in the Northwest Herald recently that you passed a $208.4 million county budget last week and had to make up a $1.38 million shortfall caused by the COVID-19 pandemic by leaning on the county's reserves. In October, I read that, that county board members Excuse me, county board member Kelly Wagner reported that the county would make an estimated 1.8 million, less than 1% of the annual budget, annually from the contract the county has with the U.S. Immigration Customs Enforcement Agency to house the immigrant 
detainees, which is considerably less than previous years. It's my understanding that a majority of the county board members are ethically and morally opposed to the ICE contract, and that makes sense to me. While an immigration issue in recent years have become highly partisan and divisive, this has not always been the case in this country. Certainly, decisions have been made on both sides of the aisle that have proven to be a stain on our country's reputation as a nation that respects human rights. However, there have also been bipartisan efforts and initiatives to rectify the mistakes of the past and move forward. President Ronald Reagan's 1986 Immigration Reform and Control Act is a perfect example. It granted amnesty to about 3 million undocumented immigrants in the United States. At the county level, we do not have the, have the choice to grant amnesty to undocumented immigrants, but we do have the choice to end the ICE contract. I don't underestimate the true moral dilemmas you are currently facing. Some of you are new to the board and are inheriting this problem. Most of you, if not all of you, had nothing to do with the initiation of this contract many years ago. If we stop detaining undocumented members of our community, then the, the county will be forced to fill a $1.8 million deficit. If we continue to collaborate with the I, with ICE to detain our neighbors, many of whom are essential workers in our nursery homes, factories, and grocery stores, we may not have to fill that deficit, but we will have to live with the consequences of that decision. As a former educator and nonprofit leader, I understand the trauma that family separation causes all too well. When a family member is detained, the family is thrown into crisis. Children are abruptly separated from their parents. The breadwinner is detained and unable to work. Families become homeless. And when deportation occurs, family members are separated indefinitely. The cost of the community as a whole is also devastating. When many children, when many children in our school are living in the constant fear that their parents might be detained, what is the impact on the personnel and financial resources of our school? When many people get in our community um, fear, oh, sorry. when many people in our community fear reporting crimes to law enforcement due to the threat of ICE detention or deportation, how many crimes go unreported? I am hopeful that the county board will work together in a bipartisan way to cancel the ICE contract. Sincerely, Megan Sullivan Spomick. This next comment is from Tony Bradburn, Crystal Lake District 2. Hello, board members, government officials, and public. I want to take a moment to express my gratitude for your diligence working through the details of the ICE contract. I know it is not an easy task, and I know that you don't take this work lightly. So thank you for your continuing to investigate the nuances that will that while still moving forward and bringing you to a decision. My hope is that in the first few months of the year, you will be at a place to bring this issue to a vote, and you will be positioned to cancel the contract. Thank you again, Tony Bradburn. Scott, you're muted. All right, well, the comment take two. Uh, this next comment is from Sherry Liskey. Thank you for reading this comment. The ICE detention is a cool form of managing an uh, asylum and immigration system through intimidation and, and incarceration. People migrate to escape unbearable circumstances in search of a decent existence. Balancing the county budget with federal funds from the system is callous. Walk with the immigrants. Welcome migrants, refugees, and asylum seekers. Cancel the contract with ICE. Sherry, and so we have Mr. Chairman, and we did. Uh, Scott did email these all out uh, about 20 minutes before the board meeting, so board members should have those to read later. 